What is going on, investors? Hopefully, guys are doing well out there. That is right. It is Friday, and it is time for the Fang Stock Recap Show here on the Investor Channel, where every Friday we recap all the major news and the technical chart patterns from all the major Fang stocks. This week, we've got Amazon closing stores. We might have a TikTok ban, and we've got banks on the run. SVB Financial, Silicon Valley Bank, actually failed this week, and the FDIC took it over. Two things as it relates to this, and then obviously we'll get to the rundown of the news of all of these companies like we normally do. But this does relate to all of these companies kind of in a cynical way, but in an exciting way if you look at it this from an investor standpoint. Now, what does SVP do? They finance a lot of Silicon Valley startups. They provide them capital. They provide them liquidity. Well, if these banks are going under... Guess who is going to benefit mega cap tech? So I know that's a very cynical way of looking at these types of things. But if these startup kind of focused banks start to go under, they start to fail. The money starts running from them. Yeah, the mega cap tech that has so much money and all they're doing is buying back their stock to the tune of 10, 20, 30, 90 billion dollars over the past couple of years. Yeah, they're going to benefit, and that's good if you're in any of these types of names. The other thing is I think this is signaling that the Federal Reserve is going to pump the brake. Look, Jerome Powell let all of us starve on the street and our family and our children, but the minute the member banks start to struggle and start to give a little pushback, well, doves are going to be flying over the Federal Reserve here very shortly. Now, let's kick things off like we always do. With Meta Platform, start of the week at 187. I am recording. There's about 10 minutes left in the trade. So this stock ended about four. Most of these stocks actually down about 4% on the week. Meta, about 4.5% to finish the week. Very close to 179. Meta Platforms is I'm building its own Twitter rival. If I had a dollar for every website that tried to emerge to challenge Twitter, I probably would have a couple of dollars myself. Supposedly, Meta is planning some kind of decentralized type of thing. Nobody trusts Meta with these types of things. And Meta's got plenty of users and plenty of customers. Uh, that sounds like a fail project to me. Meta to pause bonus payments for Reels creators and expand advertising on reels. I actually got a few of these bonus payments. I posted like reels and I got like 10 bucks or something per reel. Well, they're going to put the pause button on that. Eventually, maybe do some revenue sharing with the reels. But I tell you what, there's a lot of people that just post content for free to these multi-billion and sometimes trillion dollar market cap companies. Nah, I'll just let the users put the content up there for free and collect that ad money. Now, Snapchat rose earlier in this week, although most stocks slid later in the week. As an anti-TikTok bill is set to launch, this bill actually does have some bipartisan support. And so we'll certainly see. I think the most likely outcome with TikTok is a forced sale to a United States company. But again, that would complicate things as well because it's like, okay, yeah, the only companies in the world right now that can afford a company like TikTok are Apple, Meta, Google, Microsoft, and obviously the federal government has been on a tear trying to stop those types of acquisitions. So it'll be interesting to see the outcome of this, whether or not TikTok gets some kind of for sale or some other remedy happens. But obviously an outright ban of TikTok and just getting rid of it altogether would be extraordinarily bullish for Meta. Now, the company reportedly ready to cut thousands of more jobs as soon as this week. Mark Zuckerberg is about to go on parental leave for his third child, we certainly wish him luck with that, but he's going to cut some people on his way out to that parental leave, and it's a good sign. Now, I think when you see these types of things like mid-quarter, these companies are already got a little bit of visibility into their earnings and kind of the revenue that they're producing this quarter. And when we get to Amazon, we're going to see more of this. These companies already just continuing to tighten the belt. Moving on to Apple, start of the week at 154, down about 4%, like most of these stocks finished the week, very close to $148 per share. Apple is reelecting their board of directors at a shareholder meeting, and they support Tim Cook's pay, which I believe was reduced a little bit. Apple and Foxconn said to lobby for more liberal labor laws in India. They are going to allow now 12-hour shifts and nighttime work for women. That sounds miserable. This is why when I get on here and I say, hey, the advancement of robots and these types of things, yeah, it eliminates jobs, but at the same time, 
It can eliminate a 12-hour shift and women working at night. Men or women, doesn't really matter. Now, Apple unveils a classical music streaming app for music subscribers. This goes along with the fact that they acquired classical music streaming service Prime Phonics sometime in 2021. This is a standalone app, but if you have access to Apple Music or you pay for that, sounds like you'll get access to this and they'll roll this out to Android and other music streaming platforms in the future. Moving on to Amazon, start of the week at 95, just like pretty much all these stocks down over 4%, finish the week closer to $90.70. More cost cuts. You think Amazon's got some visibility into their Q2 earnings? Chances are they're probably not going to be good as the company is shuttering its Go stores. I was actually excited about the Go stores and I've seen this technology. I was at a conference and talked to some people there. I've been in one of these stores and kind of used it. It was really cool. I thought this was really cool because not necessarily for Amazon, but to license this out. Now, they're not shuttering all the Go stores. They're not shuttering all the technology, but boy, they are pulling things back. And this uh, after we reported the story last week that they are halting construction on their headquarters, at least part of the building that was going to be erected in the state of Virginia. Now, Amazon self-driving unit, Zooks, faces a safety probe. That's nothing really new with these types of things. I think the more alarming thing is all the freaking cameras and all the stuff that this might be an older technology stack that they're running here. But if you've got to put this much stuff on a car to make it self-drive, I I not confident in that technology moving forward. Moving on to Netflix, start of the week at $321. This one had a complete reversal. You'll see that from a technical perspective, down over 9%, finish the week closer to $292 per share. Verizon is relaunching an offer for free year of Netflix via its Plus Play Hub. This should boost Netflix subscriber numbers, obviously kind of on a wholesale level. Disney Plus does this, uh, Netflix does this as well, where we consumers pay kind of what is the retail price, but then Verizon will negotiate a lower price to kind of incorporate this into some kind of other service bundle. Obviously will help Netflix from a revenue perspective. The more people that sign up for that Netflix revenue could get a rise as charging for passwords sharing rolls out. Now, this looks like kind of a mid quarter thing. It looks like to me it rolled out in parts of the world and parts of the geographical regions sometime in February. So we'll get probably a little bit of read on this in the upcoming quarter for Netflix, which is still uh, probably a month and a half away. But subsequent quarters down the line, Q3, Q4 into uh, later this year, we should see the impact of this from either either a positive or a negative impact for Netflix. Moving on to NVIDIA, start of the week at 237, down just 3.6%, finished the week close to about $230 per share. NVIDIA holds steady earlier in the week on a report that Huawei sales might be at risk. Obviously, the United States and China are kind of sable rattling, and it's kind of a tick-for-tat type of thing, and obviously NVIDIA will be stuck in the middle there. They have some exposure to China, but based on what we've seen out of the company, it's not anything really material to the company in the longer run. Moving on to Google, start of the week at $94, like most of these stocks, down about 4%, finish the week at about $90.50. Google is preferring workers for fewer senior promotions to go along with the layoffs that have been announced. I've been hearing over at Google from some sources I have there. They're trying to flatten the management structure there. I also read an article that CEO Sundar Pichai is getting a little bit more involved in those types of things, and they are going to make a major push to roll out some AI products here in the next couple of months. Another anecdotal thing, I turned off, I have a, like a perpetual Google Ads account that I've been having running for over a decade just to a website, just kind of feed it traffic. I paused it this week and Google called me, I, I think three times a day for a week to get me to turn that back on. So they're being aggressive with the sales department over at Google. Moving on to Microsoft, start of the week at 257, down about 3.5% finished the week at about $248 per share. Microsoft and Sony, they're not in agreement here and they're still at odds in the UK and here in the United States as well over that Call of Duty $69 billion Activision deal. Microsoft obviously believing that, I, I believe they're in the third place in terms of console gaming. And then if you throw in like PC and then mobile gaming, 
the Xbox is actually like fourth or fifth place. So it's going to be hard for regulators to argue that Microsoft has this just dominant position. And if they get Call of Duty, it really is going to hurt Sony. And the Microsoft's going to claim her back saying, hey, we've offered 10-year exclusive deals or a 10-year deal to Sony, Nintendo, even NVIDIA for the Call of Duty content rights. And so we'll see where this goes. My guess we're heading towards an approval, but it will be messy along the way. Microsoft continues to move at the speed of light when it comes to integrating chat GPT technology in their power platform. That is a developer suite. And they just continue to roll this out at the speed of light. And my sources tell me Google will be doing a similar thing here very soon. Moving on to Tesla. So the week at 195, this is the big loser of the week down over 11% the finished week. At about 173, very interesting from a technical perspective when we get to that on Tesla. Now, the company reportedly reaches out to Asian suppliers amid battery crunch. This could be that, you know, look, there's pretty good demand for the vehicles. And so they need these battery supplies. And so we'll see what happens there. But we also got some conflicting news on there as they slashed the prices on the Model S and Model X cars to help boost demand that was a four to nine percent price cut on on cars that cost in excess i believe most of the time over a hundred thousand dollars so four to nine percent is actually pretty significant although when you look at tesla's financials you don't get you know look from a revenue perspective hundred thousand dollar car is fantastic but from a numbers perspective obviously the model three and the more importantly the model y lead the way for tesla now the company might start production in that beautiful mexico facility as early Early as 2024, that is the beauty of doing business outside of the state of California, because it'd probably be like 2044 before you got something like that built out here in the state of California. So Mexico, I would assume the Mexico, obviously there's going to be some demand for Teslas down in Latin America and Mexico itself. My guess is those cars will feed into Southern California and other parts of the United States. If, you know, look, maybe there's enough demand down in South America for these cars. We'll certainly see that when we get to it now. Let's jump over to the technical segment of the show. We did break through a very critical level here. We broke through our technical uptrend was intact. It's not that this is over. It could start to flatten out, but we are headed to our line in the sand, which we, you know, color coded here with a brown line. So we are absolutely headed towards a back test of this trend line that we kind of hit our head on for basically a year on the S&P 500. We finally broke through it. Now, very typical. You come back down here and do a back test. That would retest the lows that we made back in December at, we'll call it 3,800 and some change on the S&P 500. I mean, we are a stone's throw away from there. I've added a green box of what I would call accumulation here on the S&P 500. Anywhere south of that line in the sand, I mean, I wouldn't run in. We come in here and test this line in the sand and we break through it. I'm not I'm not running out and buying SPY or anything like that because chances are you're going to retest these lows that we made back here in October. Now, he, just take a step out here and have a little bit broader look at these types of things. I, I just want to show you this. For a year or so, it's about 11 months, the S&P 500, outside of a couple of days in August of last year and maybe one day in October and maybe one day in February, the stock market is actually, and when we refer to the stock market, the S&P 500 here, has been in a basically a 14% trading range up or down. So yes, we have banks failing and the FDIC is taking over. This is uh, not a good sign. You're going to have a lot of doom and gloom type of stuff. If we certainly, if we break this line in the sand, it will call it 3750 on the S&P 500. There's going to be CNBC specials and there's going to be a lot of red on the screen. Just understand that we're in a 14% trading range. And if you can't stomach a 14% trading range as a long-term investor. Now, I understand if you're in your 60s, if you're very close to retirement, if you've put this money aside for a down payment on a house or for college or whatever it is, or certainly if you just started in the market, it kind of sucks to like put your money in and be down 14%. But guys, 14% is nothing. Anyone with that longer term focus should be starting to plan right now. Because like I said, the news is going to get worse. There's going to be more bank failures. There's going to be Fed speak. There's going to be all this stuff going on in a 14% trading range. So get your plan in now. My plan is to start accumulating stocks 
a one I, I think we're probably going to test this area of the line in the sand and then if we break through it then it'll be uh, all systems go in terms of acquiring more stocks now one of the stocks that i do definitely want to get back into i like some of the stuff that meta is doing i still don't like the goggle project but i like and respect what mark is doing from a headcount perspective made a lower series of highs here I'm still not convinced that we're not going to come down here and kind of fill this gap. That would be kind of the first area I would be excited about. This, I mean, this trend line is still intact. Believe it or not, this massive, like, near 90-degree trend line is still intact. It's still intact even today. And, look, the market could just come back next week and just continue to rally higher. I guess that is possible. I think a more likely scenario is we get back onto, like, this trend with Facebook. We come down here. We fill this gap, retest these areas south of 160. That'd be the first area where I'd be excited about Meta. If I'm wrong and this one continues to go up, I'm not necessarily going to chase it. Should meet some resistance here. You'll have subsequent pullbacks. I mean, we're still miles away from the next earnings report. I'm seen not until April 26. So we're still well over a month before you get some earnings when it comes to Meta. Moving on to Apple. This one got rejected right on this gold line. So there's really two, there, there's a couple of trends with Apple. The first one is straight up in the air. That is why, you know, we're, our, our natural kind of knee jerk reaction is when stocks like this pull back, well, look, the longer term trend with the stock, as I probably don't need to show you, is, is straight up in the air. Now, the more intermediate trend is actually sideways for more all intents and purposes. The stock has been trading between 115 and we'll just call it up here 150, 160 for a while now. I mean, way over a year, nearly two years. Kind of the micro trends, though, are kind of sideways down. There's obviously this red trend line we've not been able to get above and we haven't been able to get above this gold line. The green box that we have marked out with Apple, at least from my perspective, you got to get south of about 135 on this one. You get south of 135 in the coming days and weeks ahead. That's where I'd probably pull the trigger there. Moving on to Amazon. This one just still in the box. Done a full back test on this black trend line. Just kind of walking down it. It's about halfway in between our green box, which we have not moved, okay, from about $80 to $100 per share. And again, we're at $90. we are halfway in between there. Starting a position here wouldn't be the worst thing. Waiting for this thing to go a little bit lower, not necessarily the worst thing either. This one doesn't look too bad, although not much has changed over the last week. Now, where we have seen some change is Netflix. Look at this. We had a big reversal on this stock and we broke through a key area here on our green trend line. Now, you can start moving your trend lines around, which most traders tell you not to do. Don't adjust your lines to tell you what you want to see. I wouldn't say that that is over, but yeah, I think the high probability with Netflix is we come back down here and retest an area down here south of, we'll call it 250 if you do it really quickly, but maybe right on the dot of 250, that'd be the first area where I'd be excited about Netflix. Now, moving on to NVIDIA. I've had a little bit of a pause this week is resting on an area, a very easy area of support right here in the two, basically where the stock is right now at about 230. I'm looking for a break here. Stock's just way overextended, a break below 200, in my opinion, would signal not necessarily the greatest buying opportunity. I'd love for us to pull back into our green box, which is down here south of 160, which I know seems like a long ways away, but this is obviously a high, higher volatility stock, but anything south of 200 is the first area where I would be excited about NVIDIA. Now, moving on to Google, boy, I had my IRA account open today, and here's a tip for you guys. Don't don't open your account very often. I I might log into my retirement account a couple times a year. Really, it's just to buy stocks. Now, what I bought today was actually Bank of America, and I'm showing you this because this stock has been on you know a decade long uptrend, represented by this purple line. And anytime you touch this purple line, it's been a buy. Doesn't really get any more complicated or any simpler than that. And I know some people are saying, well, you got banks, you got banks being taken over to the FDIC and you're buying banks. Well, this is the plan, guys. This is why you come up with these plans in advance. I told myself multiple times, well, if Bank of America comes back to this purple line, I'm going to buy. Whether or not it turns out to be a good idea, I don't know. But you've got to discipline yourself to have that plan. Now, the, the plan almost kicked in with Google. It's just I have bought this stock a lot at this area and I'm already, I wouldn't say overweight Google, but I already have 
a pretty substantial position in the company. And so I, I don't mind waiting. If I'm wrong here, we continue to move lower. There'll be better opportunities. If the stock does find some footing here, which actually makes sense and moves higher, look, I have a substantial position in it and I'll benefit from it. But this stock is towards the top end of what I would call a buying zone. If this negative momentum continues in these markets, you get more bank runs, things like that. Yeah, you could come south of 80 bucks on Google and that would be just fantastic from a valuation and a fundamental perspective. Moving over to Microsoft, just sitting right here. We have this red line right here. It's an area of support at about two, we'll just call it 250 on the stock. You break lower than 250, you've got areas down here south of 230. Those would be great opportunities in my opinion for Microsoft. Now, finally, Tesla did break through the key area of support, which we've had on the stock marked out for a little over a year and a half now. That's kind of, we'll just call it like the 180. It's really like 175 to 180, maybe even upwards of 185. But somewhere in this range, this was a key area of support. You broke through it. Our green box essentially starts where Tesla is. Again, I probably have too many lines and too many things going on here, but when you see a green box, that's what I would call kind of an accumulation zone. When you're towards the top and you want 10 shares of Tesla, maybe you buy one here. And if you can buy fractional amounts of Tesla, like you buy 0.5 of Tesla or 0.1 of Tesla, yeah, this is where potentially you start because you can find some footing here. The stock could rebound, those types of things. I'm not really anticipating that. I think Tesla continues to move lower in the coming weeks, and then you get some good buying opportunities here, probably south of 150. You get south of 150, that's probably when maybe you tag back in on Tesla. But that was it for this week. We had an eventful week, and we'll certainly see the fallout moving into next week. As I talked about, you got Silicon Valley banks that fund the startups. They're going busto. That's going to be fantastic news for the mega cap incumbents. On top of that, this will pretty rapidly get the Federal Reserve to pause. They'll let you lose your job. They'll let you starve on the street. But there's no way they're going to let a bunch of bank runs happen. That is disastrous to their reputation and disastrous to the people that they actually answer to and that they actually care about. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll be back again next Friday. I'll have another video this weekend as well. Good luck with your investments.